Hi, my name is Walt Bednarz with Design Point Solutions, and in this video I'm going to go through the Enterprise PDM Database Server service. And this is a service pulling the SQL Server. Now, when I say server, it doesn't necessarily mean a physical machine, but these two services, the Database Server and the SQL Server, are typically located on the same server, the same physical machine. And sometimes, in a small imp implementation, it's also there with the Archive Server as well. So looking at this, what we want to do is talk about some of the EPDM services that are dependent on the database server. And these would be things like workflow notifications, where you're going through a workflow, a notification automatically goes out to a user, and it gets stored into a database table on the SQL server. The database server service, the EPDM database server service, is pulling that table to extract that information, send it to a user. Other things that are dependent on the database server service would include file vault views, add in up and add in updating information. So if you're having some issues with views not updating properly, it's another thing to consider is the database server may be the, the reason for the problem. Lists sometimes use SQL queries to get their content and then cold storage and replication scheduling the schemas are dependent on the database server to transmit that information so if you're having problems with any of these components here these these pieces of EPDM one of the first things I suggest to users or EPDM admins is to try restarting that DB that database service so to do that you would go into your services you would locate your database, your SOLIDWORKS Enterprise database server service, and you could just restart that. Or sometimes just stop, wait a moment, and then start the service. If all of a sudden notifications start flowing through the system again properly, that would indicate that there's something wrong with that service and you might want to do some troubleshooting. And we're going to go through some troubleshooting here in this video. Looking at uh, several different things here want to check the authentication information and the database server configuration utility. Uh, any errors reported on the application log, and that would be the, the actual uh, one from the event viewer of Windows. Tables, specific tables within SQL, and also going through the registry. So we'll take a look at those at this point. So authentication information and database configuration utility. And that utility, I would find that in Start, All Programs, we're going to go to SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM, and there's this database server configuration utility. And you just want to make sure that you have the authentication information for the SQL server in one with DB owner access. By default, it's going to be the SA user, and then the correct password needs to be in there. So you want to make sure that's correct. Uh, you might have to get that from IT. They may have used a different user as well for this installation. So you want to check and make sure that that information is accurate. Another piece here is going into the event viewer. And this is the Windows event viewer. You would get there by going to start, typing in event. You would see that come up. Start that up. You want to go into Windows logs and you're looking at the application logs and you're looking for error information on the enterprise database server. So what I did here is I sorted by the information type and I'm just looking at information here and then you're looking for errors for the EPDM database server and I don't have any in my case here but you want to check those pieces for uh, the SOLIDWORKS database service for any kind of errors and read that to see if you have uh, issues going on there that could help diagnose what's going on. Now there's also specific tables within SQL that you can take a look at. So I mentioned like workflow notifications, they get pushed through the system. Well, they get stored into a database table specific to your vault. And that's just one example of what to look for. What I'm using here is the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. This could be, this would typically be on the SQL Server, but you can also install this on a, on a client and have it point to the proper service to server to, to access the database information. I'm going to connect to that here and we'll expand this section out, this databases. There is a general database called the Conicio Master DB that has some information on it that we want to check first. 
and that would be the file vault, file vaults table. And I'm just going to go in here, right mouse click, and say edit top 200 rows. And that's going to give me a list of information, records inside that database table. In this case here, what I'm looking at is a vault name and database name. So you want to make sure that that's consistent with the actual vault name. So you go in your admin utility and verify that. And also the database name, which you would see on your list of databases here. So you just want to make sure that those are accurate. That's one of the first things to look for. Now we'll take a look inside of some of the tables of a specific vault. I have my docs here. So first one being uh, would be the document action info. I would look in there to see if there's any notifications that are not going through. So when a notification is generated dropped in here first in this table and if I see any of them lingering here that indicates to me that the database service is not pulling them out of there. If I restarted the service and all of a sudden those disappeared they would wind up going to the user. So again that, that indicates an issue. There are some other ones here as well. Some other tables we'll look at. There's one here called broadcast event contains records for scheduled information that's supposed to leave the system. So things like uh, replication scheduling, cold storage, also the file listing and and just EPDM lists information. So if you're seeing things lingering, lingering in here as well, there could be an issue with your database service. next place we're going to look is inside your registry. And there's a specific key, or I should say a specific area that you want to look within. I'm going to go into HKey Local Machine, Software, SolidWorks, Applications, PDM Works Enterprise, and then the Mail Service. So within there we see several different pieces of information that we want to check and make sure that they're accurate. Now if you're if your database server service is actually on a different server than your SQL server, you would want to make sure that there's the server name for the SQL server in here. Uh, since they're both on the same computer in this case, I can leave that blank and there's no issue there. Once again, the user that's accessing the SQL server should be one with DB owner access, in this case SA. And this piece and a few of the other ones we're going to talk about here are controlled by that database server utility, configuration utility. We have the poll interval. It's set to 60 seconds, but you can see here it's put in hexadecimal form. You can actually verify the value here. There is also the event poll interval set at 10 seconds. So those are default values that you want to maintain. And finally, there's the password, which is stored in here. And that you can't verify. You would have to enter that information through your Enterprise PDM database server service. So these are some pieces that you just want to verify that there's accurate information, especially the 60 seconds and the 10 seconds here. Now, if you want to create a log that stores information specific to the database server information, you would create a key or a value inside the mail service here to capture that. And simply done by just right mouse clicking here, go to new, and we're going to create a D word value. That's a 32 bit value. And we're going to put in there a value of log, or a name of log and a value of 1 on the end there. So we'll go in there just put in a decimal value of 1. And that's telling the system to now start creating a log file and it stores it at the root directory of the server and it's in a file named dbserverlog.txt. Now this can generate a pretty large file over time so when you're done having logged some information you want to disable this 
you can either do by deleting or changing the value to zero. And finally, if, if you can't find the information you need to fix the issue, uh, what you could do is you can just finally do a clean reinstall of the software. And that involves going to your control panel, we'll go to programs and features, and we'll locate SolidWorks Enterprise PDM. We'll give us a moment to update. So here's my SolidWorks Enterprise PDM. I'm going to go in here and change. We'll go on modify here. And what we would do is we would remove this component here. So this feature would not be available and then continue through. So it would uninstall the software. So I'm going to cancel this. So I'm not actually going to go and do a reinstall. But once that's removed from there, a good thing to do is then delete this mail service section from within the SolidWorks Applications PM Works Enterprise. Same one we were looking at before. You're going to delete that to do a clean uninstall. It gets all this information out of here. And then you would go back and modify again under Program Files and get that database service reinstalled. So that would be your clean uninstall or reinstall process. So hopefully this, this video helps you in understanding the Enterprise PDM database service better.